Hello and welcome everyone to the Varsity Tutors Historical Viewpoints Collection, where tonight we're honored to be able to salute our men and women in uniform by taking a closer look at that uniform itself. If you're like me, anytime you see uniform service personnel, it's likely to stand up a little bit straighter and feel a moment of gratitude, but you'd be a little embarrassed if they asked you what those patches, insignias, and medals really mean. And so we are thrilled to have our friends from Soldiers and Sailors Memorial Hall and Museum in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We've got Mike and Tim here with us to take a closer look at that uniform and tell us about the stories that military uniforms tell. Now, while we're interested in the stories that the uniforms have to tell, we also wanna hear what you have to say. And so I'm gonna direct your attention to the right of the video. There's a chat panel there. Mike and Tim are gonna ask you guys some questions to find out about what you know about military uniforms, what kinds of military uniforms are in your family, et cetera. So answer their questions there and please ask any and all questions you may have. And in the last 10 minutes or so, I'll interview them with your questions and we'll get as many as we can answered. We also in about half an hour are going to have an opportunity for everybody to lean into the screen and get a selfie with some military memorabilia and you see some great things on the screen there. We'll tell you about more uh, throughout today's class. So make sure you've got a camera nearby and if you take that photo and then upload it to Instagram and tag both sail uh, Soldiers and Sailors Memorial Hall and Museum, it's a tongue twister in a lot of names, and Varsity Tears. We'll have the handles up there um, on the way out so you know exactly what to tag. You'll be entered to win uh, a swag bag from the museum and a full year of VT Plus membership. I'll tell you more about all that. It's a great prize package. So have a camera nearby. All right. Now that you've got your marching orders, uh, it's time for me to introduce your teachers for today. We've got Tim Neff and Michael Krause from Soldiers and Sailors. Guys, take it away. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, I am Tim Neff. I am the uh, Director of Education here at Soldiers and Sailors. And with me here is Michael Krause, our curator. And we're very happy to be here today to present the stories that military uniforms tell. Um, we're going to uh, look at the patches, insignias, all the different symbolism that's behind a military uniform and look at the meaning and the significance of it. And I think we're gonna learn a lot about um, what they can tell you and, and what you can learn about a soldier from, from just looking at a simple uniform. Um, looking at the screen right now, we've got our four sections laid out. These are the sections we'll be working through today. Um, we've got understanding military uniforms. Um, that'll be kind of an overview and also a little bit of history about uniforms. Then we're gonna look at an example uniform um, that we actually have live with us here today. And we'll take a look at all the different things that appear on that uniform. Then we're gonna play a game it's called Patch Match. And this will be a little bit of an interactive game where we're gonna test your uh, skills, your deductive skills to see if you can figure out um, what patches uh, you're, you're uh, being described. And finally, we'll end with a little bit more about Soldiers and Sailors Memorial Hall and Museum and all the great things that we do here. So very exciting, lots to cover. And with that, we're gonna go ahead and kick things off. And I'm gonna start right away with a question. Have you ever worn a uniform for any reason? And if you have, what does your uniform mean to you? Give everybody a chance here. I hope everybody's typing their answers in. I'm seeing a lot of quick answers here of the yes, wearing uniforms. And of course, you know, you can also add what type of uniform you wear. I mean, there's a lot of different types of uniforms. Of course, we just saw some there in the photos. You know, you might have a school uniform, a, a sports team. Um, you might wear a uniform for work or for scouts, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, um, you know, all these different things. And I'm seeing all those answers come through here. That's, that's really great. Um, and, you know, that, that brings a lot of meaning behind it. And that really leads to a follow-up question of what does it mean to you when you wear your uniform? Um, let's see what everybody has to say about that. Okay. Yeah, you get a sense of togetherness. You identify with, with you know, other people. You know, what does it mean to you? It's a source of pride. Yeah, very good. That's a good answer. Um, you know, yeah. I mean, these are these are all exactly right. I mean, they de definitely have this sense, this identity, if you will, with a larger group. And you know, what it feels like to be a, a part of a bond with other individuals as a part of a team or a group. Um, and in even some cases, we see the fireman's uniform there, a uniform can even provide protection um, for you. So um, yeah, I, I think everybody's had an experience probably in one way or another wearing a uniform. But of course, today specifically, we are here to talk about military uniforms. Um, so we're gonna move on here. And uh, the next question we have here is, what do you expect to learn from a military uniform? This is really gonna get to the heart of what we're talking about today. Right, I'm seeing right away rank, you know, what rank a soldier is, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
different, you know, awards the soldiers received. Yep. Mm -hmm. Maybe what branch of service they're from or what era they served in. Okay. What country they're from. Yeah, that's definitely very significant. Right. Soldier's name. No, sometimes there are examples when soldiers have a name played on their uniform. Not all the time, though, but there are examples of that. But yeah, you're hitting on a lot of the, uh, the, the key points that we're going to highlight and a couple more that, that you're not you're not quite catching up on that we'll go through. And really, I think what you'll find is by the end of all this, you'll really be able to, to uh, learn so much about a soldier's service and, you know, what they've been through. And it's all just by uh, deciphering all these different symbols and insignia on the uniform. So very good job. I'm really happy with a lot of those answers there. Um, so we're going to go ahead now and uh, talk about just some of the categories. This is just a, an introduction here, basically, to the different types of symbols and insignia that we'll be looking at today. You start with unit membership, right? That can be, you know, what division you serve in or corps or army you serve in, what regiment, you know, it's just a, a designation of who you actually serve with. Then rank, we mentioned that, yep, exactly right. Of course, what rank you are, private, um, sergeant, um, maybe you're an officer, a lieutenant, all the way up to, to general, all have different ways to, to let people know that. One that I, I, I didn't catch, I'm sure somebody might have said it, but I didn't catch it in the answers there, length of service. Um, you can actually learn um, from, you know, service stripes, how long somebody was in the military. And you'll, we'll be looking at those as we go through here. Valor, yeah, awards and, and ribbons um, are going to be a part of this. And you see a ribbon there, and we'll talk about what they mean and what they represent. And finally, the last category is badges. And, and I'm going to also throw in their badges and pins. These are two other ways that uh, just additional insignia and symb uh, symbolism that you see that tell you about a soldier service, maybe what their job was, some of their, um, you know, what they qualified for, all different things can be uh, deciphered from different badges and pins. So really in general, these are the main categories that we are gonna focus on when we examine a uniform to try to learn about a soldier service. But before we even do that, I think it is important just to start with a little bit of history and just find out you know, how this all got started. So I'm gonna throw it out to you guys one more time. When in the uh, evolution of the American military uniform, do you think that patches and insignia first appeared? Revolutionary War, okay, Civil War. So you're going real early, which is good, all right? World War One, okay, all right. So I'm seeing a lot of different answers and believe it or not, a lot of these are actually accurate because there is no one answer to this question. This was kind of a toughie because there is no one singular answer. Each one of those categories may have a different starting time, uh, you know, depending on, you know, which category and what era. Um, so we're gonna actually just quickly do a quick run through about the history and uh, I'm gonna turn it over to, to Michael here, our curator, and he's gonna walk you through some of the, um, the history of these different symbols and insignia. So the US Army uh, initially didn't have a lot of insignia when it started out as, when we were a very young nation. The only insignia you might see were insignia that uh, differentiated officers from enlisted men or sergeants uh, who were in charge of squads, but it wasn't um, until later uh, around the um, Mexican War in the 1840s that chevrons started to be worn on the sleeve. And those are a V-shaped uh, cloth patch. Uh, but what I wanna get into here is the, um, the symbols, the, the symbols that delineate what, uh, what unit or core that somebody belonged to. And that's all thanks to this gentleman you see here, Major General Philip Kearney. Uh, and did you notice he has one arm? He uh, was a soldier before the Civil War and lost his arm in uh, the war with Mexico in 1846. And in the Civil War, he was a general and uh, in a battle uh, where um, there was a lot of confusion and men were mixed up, he wanted a way to identify who were his men. So he, made, he, he produced an order that um, had them cut up. Some of his troops were issued red blankets and he had them cut um, a small square, a diamond shape, um, and then affix those to their hats. And that was called a Kearney patch. And that from the Kearney patch, and you see that the third one down on the left, the red diamond is the uh, red patch that he uh, devised. From that sprang all these different um, insignia called core badges. 
And these all represented different corps within the Army, uh, the Northern Army. This is the Army of the Potomac, um, and, some, and then some of the Western armies are represented here too. But you see different shapes, circles, clovers, diamonds, triangles, Maltese cross, crosses. And these were, um, these were sewn to a soldier's uh, hat in particular. In fact, I have one here I can show you. This is a Civil War cap and you see the clover on top of it. That is a second corps insignia and the color indicates that it's from the first division. So color and shape are gonna be very important here. Um, it was, uh, the, and you see the different colors, red, white, and blue, those indicate the different uh, brigades of the different um, divisions. So after the Civil War, um, there were, uh, the very first medals started to be issued um, after this, during the Spanish-American War and after the Spanish-American War. Um, there were medals that were retroactive to the Civil War. Um, and I should say that this, the Medal of Honor was established during the Civil War and issued. And that was the only medal that the United States government produced. But we go on to um, uh, World War I is the real genesis of the shoulder patch insignia. And that's where you're gonna to start to see a lot of the shoulder patches evolve to the ones that we actually have today. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think it's interesting how it, it evolved kind of organically. There wasn't a, you know, a, a set time when you can just say, all right, everybody has to wear this now or everybody has to wear that. Some of it was by necessity. Some of it was just pure creativity. Um, I'm fascinated by World War I patches. I know we have some beautiful ones in our collection. A lot of them are hand sewn um, that soldiers added to their uniform after the war. And, and it, it really speaks to what we're saying here. They wanted people to see, you know, and, and, and they wanted to be proud of what they, what they did in the service. They wanted people to see that and recognize that. Um, so it is a, a very interesting, just, we could spend a whole class just on the history of, yeah, of, yeah. of how this all got started, but we wanted to at least set a little parameters here on, on some of the early beginnings of, of all of these symbolism and, and, uh, and uh, insignia. So with that, um, I have one more question for you coming up here. Do any of you have a military uniform in your house? All right, yeah, lots of yeses. I'm getting yeses plus, you know, little description of who it, who it belonged to. That's wonderful. I'm seeing moms and grandparents and everything. Yeah, I mean, I, I, don't, I think it's, you know, you don't have to usually go too far um, to, to find some of these. Usually they are dress uniform and that's the uniform a lot of, that you're gonna see most of the, the symbols on. Um, and, you know, sometimes they just hang in a closet and you don't think much about them, mm -hmm. but uh, um, it's kind of neat to dig them out and, you know, do a little detective work on them and, and learn about them. Um, and I'm glad to see how many people have them, know that they have them. And uh, I hope that, you know, they are a source of pride, even if, of course, if they're not yours, they should be a source of your family pride um, to, to know that a loved one served and, and has, has that uniform and it's still in your possession. And of course, as a museum, we get people that donate uniforms to us. So we're always very thankful when, when people bring uniforms in to donate to us uh, from their families. Okay. We're now gonna look at our example uniform here. We have a, a beautiful sample uniform here. It's a class A dress uniform. Um, it's filled with just about everything you can imagine. You're seeing all the different viewpoints here um, as we go through here. And really what we're gonna do is just very quickly set what, what we're gonna be calling here kind of like the geography of the, of the uniform and the different locations upon a uniform that you're gonna see different types of symbols and insignias. All right, so let's start with our first one here which is going to be straight on front shot. That's a nice complete shot there. You see the right breast and the left breast where you see a lot of ribbons and colors being shown there. We'll dive into a little bit more of this more specifically, um, but then you can move on to the next part of the uniform, which is the sleeve. Um, and that's a, you know, you're gonna see a patch there that we'll talk about and up, to, up at the top on your shoulder, you're seeing that. And then on the, on the next one here, keeping going, we have the other sleeve. Um, and you can see there's at the top and the bottom of the sleeve. Uh, I hinted at the service stripes. That's what we're seeing down there at the bottom. Um, and we'll talk about that even more as we go along. Uh, even that little uh, stripe all the way at the bottom of the sleeve has a little meaning behind it. So um, it's almost like everything you're looking at here has, has something, uh, means something on the uniform. And if we go on to the next one, it's now we get a nice close up of that uh, of that breast there and we get to see all the different ribbons and uh, awards that this soldier received. 
Um, we'll talk about those and their significance as we go through. You've probably seen this in movies and, and a lot of times in a movie, they might be exaggerated, but you know, obviously the more you, the, that you see there in all the different colors, uh, the more that soldier has accomplished. Uh, if we go over to the other side, all right, and then this is gonna be some just final last badges and things um, that we'll discuss and uh, wrap everything up with that side there uh, with a, a additional pins as well. So, you know, as you can see there, there's stuff everywhere on these uniforms on, on both uh, sides of the front, on both sleeves. And what we're gonna do now is really walk you through with the live uniform that we have here. And I'm gonna turn it over back over to Michael and he's gonna use a, a pointer here and point out uh, some of the highlights of this particular uniform. So uh, as Tim mentioned, this is a class A uniform. This particular uniform is from a soldier who uh, served during the Vietnam War. Um, but what, what you're gonna see, and Tim talked about the geography, are these different areas where um, everything is intentional. Everything is specified where it belongs and uh, how far away from the collar, or the lapel, uh, these pins are put. It's all very intentional and, and uh, according to regulation. And I wanna start on the left sleeve here. In this sleeve, uh, the left-hand side would show your current unit, uh, the unit that you're currently serving in. So this is a special operations um, command patch here. And we see that this soldier has two additional parts and these are called tabs. These were earned, oh, this one in particular, a ranger tab. The soldier went to ranger school and ranger training and became a ranger, uh, a ranger, which is a special qualification. And he's an airborne soldier, which also means he had special training and uh, qualifications that he fulfilled. On the right-hand sleeve, we have uh, another patch. This is um, the former, former unit patch. And you, a lot of times a soldier will, will pick the one that he served the most time in or um, was the most important one. And this is a special forces patch, uh, Army Special Forces. And it also has the airborne tab on it. And Tim spoke about the service stripes. So you see those here on the bottom of the sleeve, each one representing six months overseas. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So what's that make it, Tim? Tim's the teacher. Oh, that would be three and a half years. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And the black stripe indicates an officer. An enlisted uniform would not have this um, black stripe. Uh, we also talk about, um, this is, uh, we talked about rank. The soldier's rank pin is up here. Uh, that's an eagle, and that would make, be the rank of a colonel. Um, there are uh, also unit pins up here. These are special forces uh, crests that he wears on the shoulder tab. Um, we go, if he, was a, uh, if he was an enlisted man, he would have chevrons, like pointed um, insignia here or a, a, a specialist rank, but the, that insignia rank would be worn on the sleeve as opposed to on the shoulder. Uh, we have um, this area. This is where you read uh, what an individual uh, has done. The, this is um, unique to each soldier. And um, these, are, this is called, these are called ribbons and each ribbon represents a medal. So the medal would have the same, if, you get both, you get a medal and a ribbon. Uh, the ribbon is worn on these racks and the medal is something you would display on, uh, in a different way. But the ribbons are arranged from the most important on the top and they descend, I don't wanna say the least important, but they descend down to, um, uh, a lot of times you'll see uh, ribbons uh, that represent medals from foreign governments or campaigns. So this, this particular one has um, a couple interesting ones I wanna point out. Um, this is a Distinguished Service Cross, which is a very high uh, valor medal, only second to the Medal of Honor. Um, there is also a, um, a purple heart, you see the purple color here, that's a purple heart. And a more common medal that a lot of, a lot of enlisted men get is a, is a uh, good conduct medal. And I also want you to notice there are little pins on top of these ribbons. And that's for a second or a third award of the same medal. So this soldier would have had three distinguished service crosses, was wounded 
three times. You count the ribbon and then each cluster. And that's the purple heart there, that's the right? That's the purple heart, yeah. yeah, wounded three times. Bronze star uh, with a Valor device. These are called devices and clusters. You get down here and these are campaigns. Um, and these are, this is, for example, this is a Vietnam and each one of the stars on there represents a particular um, battle or engagement or theater that the soldier was in and is uh, then uh, uh, able to wear the stars. Uh, so, so each one of these has a very specific meaning. Another Im important, when we get away from the ribbons uh, and medals, we go into badges and a, and a very important badge is this one right here. It's a rifle with a wreath around it. And this particular one has a star. Uh, this is the combat infantry badge. And those are given to soldiers who serve time uh, in direct combat. So soldiers are often proud of that patch mm -hmm. or badge. And um, it really distinguishes them uh, as a soldier who is, has fought in combat. This star elevates this uh, combat infantry badge to a second award. So this is a, a step above the combat infantry badge. Uh, military aviators wings, uh, parachute wings here with a combat jump, uh, master parachute. Um, there's a little helicopter inside of these wings flying straight at you. That's an army air assault. Um, this is a, a, a parachute halo badge. This is for a, a free fall uh, uh, parachuting exercise. And this is a Pathfinder pin. That's a special designation. Uh, again, these are all things that are earned. They're not just passed out, they are earned. On, the, on an officer's uniform, you'll see the US insignias are cut out and the enlisted ones, it's a circle like a button. And these crossed arrows are for special forces. This side, um, these are unit citations or citations. Each one is in a, in a little um, frame. And again, they might be multiple awards. So you'll see this is a presidential unit citation um, for the unit this soldier was in. And there are numerous awards to his unit that, uh, or his, that he belonged to um, uh, given by the president. So we have a, we have a lot of history here, yeah. a lot of history. And really what you're seeing here is just this composite of uh, an amazing story. Um, you know, you, the rank. So, you know, you know, how high did they achieve as far as rank? We know how long they were in the military, how long they served and they, how long they served overseas. Um, we know um, a little bit about some of the jobs that they did and some of the things they qualified for, like jumping out of a helicopter, mm -hmm. um, you know, parachuting. Uh, we learned about who they served with, of course, just from, you know, the, the divisions that they served with. And then significantly is the, the accomplishments through the ribbons that you see across the front here. So it truly is a fascinating way to learn about a soldier service. Um, now, I do want to say, just to, to be completely clear, this, at, this particular uniform is actually a composite uniform. No single individual achieved everything that we appeared on this uniform here. Um, so if anybody was sitting out there wondering three distinguished service crosses, yeah, who is this guy? Yeah, this guy, you know, <laughs> this guy's got to be the most decorated soldier of all time. We wanted to put together a, a composite uniform. Actually, this was donated to yeah. us like this, right? Yeah, it was donated like this. Yes. Yeah. So um, somebody had taken the time to really lay this out. Um, that being said, I do think it also brings up a very important point here. This is not a real person. This is a composite. Um, if somebody tried to wear this uniform, what would that be, Mike? What would that, what would you call uh, well, that? Well, that's, that's wrong. <laughs> and it's actually, there's a term for it. It's called stolen valor. Um, so uh, it's not, uh, sometimes uh, people will pretend that they, maybe they did have military service, but they'll pretend that they got certain awards and wear unauthorized ribbons or medals. And um, that's uh, a discredit to uh, not only them, but to people who really earned them. So we, we were always uh, kind of aware that that may occur. Uh, fortunately, it's not very frequent, but it does happen. Yeah, and I just think, you know, once again, that speaks to the significance of everything here. Everything has a meaning be behind it. It isn't just, you know, oh, I wanna do, I wanna put this on today or, or put this one on here today. Yeah. It is, it is um, you know, specified. very spe specific, yeah. right, and very specialized. Um, also, it kind of, I was just thinking, you know, what we're seeing here, most of this is sewn on or pinned on um, I do think it's kind of interesting that the more modern uniforms, a lot of it's done with Velcro, yeah. um, which is kind of neat, you know, you can, and it does make it easier to kind of switch things out and, and make changes. 
Uh, the ribbons are, are pretty much the same, but you know, shoulder patches and things like that are, are actually done with Velcro. So mm -hmm. if anybody has a more modern uniform, maybe sitting around the house, um, you'll notice that there's places, you know, for the for the Velcro patches and mm -hmm. insignias on there. Okay, so that's our example uniform. Like I said, this is not a, a real uniform, but it is uh, a great look at all the different things that can appear. So with that, we're gonna uh, switch gears here and we're gonna play a game that we call patch match. Um, this is gonna be with, uh, where we specifically look at unit patches. So these are gonna be patches that specify a regiment, a division, a corps, you know, a, a group basically that a soldier serves with. Um, before we jump into the game now, let's just look at some of the real famous patches um, that you might see out there. And this is one we chose basically because it's where we are. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, this is the uh, 99th division. Um, and you see that patch there with the blue and white checkerboard. Um, and that is near and dear to the city of Pittsburgh where we are here in Soldiers and Sailors. And you can see the coat of arms of Pittsburgh where it's taken from. And of course the coat of arms of Pittsburgh is actually taken from William Pitt who Pittsburgh is named after. So there are really direct ties to our city when you see that symbol. You see this symbol a lot of times on police officers' uniforms, um, you know, all over the place. Although sometimes nowadays you do see it in, in black and yellow a little yeah, bit. Yeah. And if anybody's familiar with this, uh, the city of Pittsburgh, you know, we're very pr proud of the black and yellow for the Steelers. But uh, uh, really it is, is blue and white and that's the 99th division. And we have a lot of wonderful artifacts in our museum um, from the 99th division, some beautiful stained glass windows in their honor. Um, so that one's really near and dear to us. So we wanted to do a quick, spend a couple uh, seconds on that one there. Um, some of the other real famous ones we have here, um, the 92nd Division, the Buffalo Soldiers. Um, that uh, let me, I'll turn it over to Mike. Why don't you go ahead and tell us about the, that, that patch? Yeah, uh, it, it's a, a very distinctive patch and its origins come from African-American soldiers uh, who served, um, uh, well, they, served, they began serving uh, in the military in 1863 in the Civil War, but uh, the name comes from the Indian Wars when there were black cavalry regiments out in the West uh, fighting Indians and Indians had never seen African American people before and when they when they saw them, they thought their hair was like like buffalo uh, fur. So they called them buffalo soldiers and the name became a, a proud moniker. It became something that uh, these soldiers were really proud of. And it continued into World War One. Um, they were segregated. They were regiments of only African-American soldiers uh, led by white officers. And um, World War II, the 92nd and 93rd divisions um, also served uh, segregated, uh, but later those, these divisions were integrated, but it's a point of uh, pride to tie it back to the, uh, to the original name. Yeah, and then we have the uh, first division known as the Big Red One. Um, I think you can get that uh, uh, see how obvious that is there. And I'm uh, also going to use this chance just to say, you know, this is kind of how this is going to factor into the patch match game we play of using your detective skills. Um, when, you know, first division, big red one, you know, it kind of helps when, you know, there's a big red one on the patch. It's not always that simple, but uh, that's the kind of little clues you're going to be looking through as we go through the uh, patch match game. Um, do you have anything to add about the, the big red one, Mike? Or? Uh, it's a very famous division mm -hmm. and saw a lot of combat in World War I and World War II. Yeah, and then we have um, really famous also the Airborne 101st Division Screaming Eagles. Um, and there's a really interesting story about how this patch came about, um, especially the eagle on there. And I'll let Michael tell us a little bit about that. Um, the, uh, the division originally came from Wisconsin. Uh, and it, during the Civil War, the 8th Wisconsin Infantry had a pet eagle, a mascot eagle that they would actually, he sat on a perch and he was, he perched himself up there on this shield shape uh, stand and he was carried into battle uh, alongside of their battle flags. And he was tethered so he could fly a certain amount, but he uh, belonged to the regiment. He was endeared to the regiment and he screamed while the battle was going on. So uh, when it was time to, uh, for states and uh, local national guards to uh, design patches, the Wisconsin uh, troops uh, chose the eagle, the, the eagle head, the screaming eagle, which became an airborne division in World War II. 
uh, all the way up through today. They're very famous division seeing combat um, from World War II, Vietnam, uh, um, Afghanistan, Iraq, Gulf. They're very storied yeah. and famous. Yeah, and I just think, you know, if you just try to picture that for a minute, uh, mascots were common in the Civil War. Uh, dogs were probably the most, one of the more common mascots. But if you can just picture this, this regiment in the Civil War going into battle and a guy, of course, people yeah, are carrying yeah. the flags and the guy is carrying this perch with the eagle on there. I mean, yeah. it's just amazing to, to picture that. And it's great that that legacy stays alive with that, with that uh, screaming eagle patch there. Um, so, like I said, we're now going to try our game here called Patch Match, and um, we've seen some of the types of patches that we're going to be looking for here. And remember, what you're looking for, there's a couple different things. Sometimes it's a color, sometimes it's a shape, sometimes it's, you know, a number of sides to a patch. There can be a lot of different things that you're looking for. Some of them are going to be a little easier and obvious right away. Uh, some might be a little bit harder. Um, so we're going to see how you guys do here. I'll um, we'll pull up a slide. There'll be uh, four patches on that slide, and um, it's going to ask you to decipher which one is, you know, the specific patch. And I'll give a few minutes to see how the answers come through here, and then I'll go over the answers and talk about why that one was the answer and why it was the, uh, um, why, why it is that way. So if we could get our first one up here, we're going to look at four different patches here. And what we're looking for is which patch represents the fourth army. Remember, everything's intentional. Yeah, remember yeah. about intent. Yeah. Of course, we're seeing A there, which is probably, you know, which represents army. Sure. Um, but it's not on all of them, but it uh, doesn't necessarily have to be. Okay, I'm seeing a variety of answers here. I see a lot of correct answers. I won't give it away just yet, just to make sure everybody has a chance here to guess. All right. Okay, yeah, all those that said the letter B, you are correct. And I thought maybe the A's would throw you off, but the, the key to letter B is the four leaves of the clover. Uh, and that four leaves represents the fourth army. And uh, that is how you know that that one is there. The letter A is called the fifth army. I think you would have figured that out pretty quickly. Letter C is the third army. Um, not as much to tell from that one there, not as obvious. And um, letter D, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, letter C is the sixth army. That actually does make a lot more sense. And letter D is the third army. But we were looking for letter B and uh, for all those that guessed that, very good job, very good detective skills. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Which patch represents the fifth core? Give everybody a chance here. Okay, once again, seeing a lot of right answers. You guys are getting pretty good at this already. And the correct answer here that we were looking for is letter C. And that's simple enough. That's because of the five sides, the pentagon shape of the, uh, of the patch. That represents the fifth core. Uh, if we were looking at letter A there, that's the first core. Letter B is the fourth core. There's four sections there. Um, so that's the fourth. Of course, letter C, as we said, was the fifth, the correct answer. And letter D is the third core, and that's the three-pointed star. So, you know, you're seeing all these kind of play out um, as we talk about them. And I will also mention we are moving in descending order here. Armies are the largest. Yeah. We started there. We're down to the core level. I believe we have another core coming up next, and then we'll go down from there. So let's go to the next core that we have here. Mm. This one's really tough. Which patch represents the 20th core? Okay. Yeah, I'm seeing a little, little different answers. And if you're just taking a quick, quick stab, there's no problem with that. No, no worries about that. We'll go over what it is here in a minute because I'm seeing a little bit more variety for this one, but I am seeing a lot of people getting it correct. All right, it's a little difficult. Okay, but if you were getting the right answer, you should be uh, putting in letter A. You might be wondering, well, why letter A? Yeah, you know, what's why, that? Why is that the one that, that's the 20th core? Well, if we look very closely at that, it's two X's on top of one another. And of course, X in Roman numerals is 10. Right. So you have two 10s makes the 20th core. All right, pretty tough one there. Um, but that's, that's how you would have deciphered that one. And this particular one, letter B is the 21st core, letter C is the 19th core, and letter D is the 24th core. 
right? But, and a lot of those might have nicknames that apply to the, uh, the patches and the, and the symbols that you're seeing on there. Um, that, that might be where they're coming from. But uh, the 20th Corps is simply from the Roman numerals. And I'm going to be quite honest with you, um, down in our, our curator's office, we have a beautiful illustrated book of all of these patches. And it's, it's a very hundreds detailed, of them. hundreds and hundreds, hundreds of, them. of them. Nobody has these memorized. Yeah. Um, but it is kind of fun just to, to, like I said, use your detective skills to see if you can look for little clues as you go along. All right. So for all those, once again, who let it, answered letter A, good job here. Okay, next one. We're down to uh, the patch that we're looking for here is the first cavalry division. So we're down to the division level here. Like I said, we've gone from army down to core, down to division. And remember, these are the patches that you would wear on your left sleeve. Remember, we saw on this, on this uniform on the left sleeve, this is where you would see these, these uh, unit patches. All right, I'm seeing a lot of right answers on this. Okay. And I hope our screen's not getting in the way here for the real big clue. I'm realizing now that maybe, but the uh, correct answer is letter D, right? And the reason for that is first cavalry, if you think of cavalry, the first thing you th should think about is horses. And on the uh, uh, patch on the letter D, there is a horse up in the top right corner. Um, so that should have been the giveaway there for first cavalry. Um, we have also represented here the 102nd Infantry Division, the 103rd Infantry Division, and the 106th Infantry Division. Once again, a lot of that might be from nicknames, things like that, but we're looking for cavalry. And I think it's kind of interesting to talk about this because the horse and cavalry are synonymous from back in the, the early years and then Civil War in that time period. But what did cavalry eventually become, Mike? What did, what Helicopter. did, helicopters? Helicopters, yeah. yeah. So a lot of times in Vietnam era, when you see this patch with the horse's head, it's really representing somebody that's in that's with the uh, with the helicopter units. Mm -hmm. That's first, first air cav. First air cav, exactly right. All right. So we're going to move on now to the final one here, and this is which patch represents the 26th division, also known as the Yankee division. You're probably starting to get used to looking for symbols now. Yeah, I, I, I think this one by now, yeah. you, you might be getting a, a hang of this. Although this symbol is, a you know, yeah. if you're a sports fan, sometimes they, they do this with symbols on hats and things like that. I'm seeing a lot of people picking up on it. All right. Very good. Yeah. A couple people missing it. That's all right. But yeah, the answer is letter A. Uh, and what you see there on letter A is a Y with a D around the edge of it for Yankee division. So that's how we know that one is the 26th division for the Yankee division. Uh, letter B in this case is the 24th division. Le letter C is the 25th division. And the 27th division is letter D. And that's also a New York division. And you can see the initials NY on that patch. So they're actually kind of, you have the Yankee and the New York um, the, uh, division patches here, and you see that symbolism come through. But once again, we were looking for letter A for all those who got that very, very good detective work. Um, if you got all of those correct, we give you a, a, a nice big thumbs up. Nice job. Um, good, good detective work. And um, if you're, if these are fascinating to you, if these are catching your eye, you know, it, it, there's endless amounts of information out there about these patches yeah. that you can learn about. Um, I, I was mentioning the World War I patches that we have in our collection earlier. And how many do we have on that on those boards, do you think? Uh, I bet you there's 200 patches. Yeah, 200 yeah. patches um, from the World War I era, all hand sewn. And really, what, when, when we put them on display, we consider it artwork. I mean, it truly is, you know, artwork that we're putting on display um, with some of the hand, hand done patches there. So that completes patch match. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. Hope you guys learned a little bit as well. And if you learned a little bit, hopefully it encourages you to learn more. I mean, that's really what, what we're trying to do here. You know, we can only scratch the surface with everything there is to learn about these. Um, we had people when we were telling them we were doing this class saying, are you going to talk about this or are you going to talk about that? And we knew we weren't going to get into the, the nitty gritty and all the very small details because it just would be endless. But I hope we set the stage and we hope that, um, you know, uh, we, we got you interested in this. And uh, I'd like to take this moment just to say that this is what Soldiers and Sailors is, is, so, uh, is really all about in, in some ways. As a museum, as a nonprofit museum, we have people come to us all the time asking us for help with their loved ones' uniforms. 
Uh, in fact, it was just coincidence. Just today, I had mm -hmm. somebody call me on the phone and say they had, you know, sh uh, she had her dad's Navy uniform and wanted to uh, know what the patches meant. She said he never talked about a service, which as we know is kind of common. common. Some veterans don't talk about their service. And a lot of times, you know, children want to know what their parents did. And she has the uniform, but she never got to talk to her dad about it. And she was very emotional. And, and when I said, yeah, we'd be happy to help you out, send us some photographs and we'll do our, do our research mm -hmm. on our end and help you identify some of these things. And as we've learned just from that uniform, she might be able to find out, you know, um, maybe a little bit about what his job was, yeah. or of course, what his rank was, maybe even where he's been. You know, there's a lot of different uh, things that we can learn and I hope help her out. And I just think it's important during the, this time, especially during the pandemic, um, you know, museums are such a valuable resource and I hope you're supporting your local museums and, and doing what you can. And, and if you're allowed to visit them, visit them. Um, just be, and also just to know that we're here for this. I mean, this is what mm -hmm. we do and, and we're very proud of what we do and, and we want people to take advantage of the museums that are around them. Um, soldiers and sailors, just to touch a little bit more on us here. Um, I just wanted to real quickly mention you know, a little bit about us and our mission in general. As you can pick up on, our mission is to honor the men and women who served in the military. Um, we occupy a building here in the city of Pittsburgh that's been here since 1910. You saw a photo of it just a couple seconds ago. It's a beautiful building that was built in 1910 as a Civil War memorial. Um, but today it does stand as a memorial and a museum that honors veterans from all wars. And our collection is made up of artifacts like uniforms and and helmets and things like that have been donated to us through the years. Um, so it's a wonderful place to work. Pittsburgh is home to a lot of veterans. So we're very proud to carry on their story to make sure that young people learn about this, the significant contributions of uh, the men and women to our military. And that's what, our, our, what we're all about here. So I just wanted to say, you know, thank you all for, for joining us. I know we have a little bit more to do, but I just wanted to say thank you for listening to us about soldiers and sailors and also thinking about museums during these times. Thanks to both of you. Well, while we're uh, giving gratitude, um, a huge thanks to uh, to both of you for all the insight, for uh, for you know the game to to kind of you know make uh, make the, diving into the patches that much more fun for all the artifacts, all the knowledge, um, and for all that you're doing at uh, Soldiers and Sailors to uh, to honor veterans and, and those who've served to serve as a resource for families and all those kind of things. So uh, huge thanks all around. Um, thanks to everyone in the audience for all of your questions, all of your participation. Um, it's been really great seeing all that kind of thing come through. Um, it's time to do a little more interactivity. And the one thing we promised at the beginning was that we we're going to give you an opportunity to, uh, to take a, a selfie, to take a photo with the uniform and some pretty amazing artifacts that we'll tell you about um, in a second, um, you know, that are there on the screen. So if you've got a camera ready, we want to make sure you know if you uh, upload those photos to Instagram, we'll give you a, a full clear view of it in, uh, in just a second. If you upload it to Instagram, tag Soldiers and Sailors Hall and Varsity Tutors, you'll be entered to win a swag bag from the museum and a full year membership to, uh, to VT Plus, which is our subscription service at Varsity Tutors, where you can learn everything under the sun, hundreds of classes available every month. If you don't win, it's just $19 a month and a great way to, uh, to really you know learn anything you want, specialize in, in a handful of things that you're really passionate about or dabble a little bit and, uh, and find new passions because as uh, Stephen and Michael have said, you know learning is, uh, is kind of what it's all about. So um, great prize package. We want to give you guys the opportunity to win. And so I'm going to turn the camera back over to us uh, you guys if you want to, to step out of the way we'll make sure everybody gets uh, a clear look at uh at the the, the um i'll say the uniform and the artifacts that's why i was i was stalling there so um let's get those pictures
I just realized I didn't have that uh, that picture there for you guys. I, I thought for sure I had taken care of that. Um, hey, Tim or Michael, you guys, it's active speaker mode. You guys want to just uh, tell people to say cheese and we'll make sure the uh, we get the actual thing they want to take the picture with on the screen. Cheese. Cheese. <laughs> say cheese. Cheese, everybody. All right, and we can welcome you guys back because we do have quite a few questions and uh, apologies um, for, uh, um, yeah, I don't know what you would, we would call that. I, um, I was reading through a little military slang. I think that was probably a, a snafu, um, but uh, we won't get into um, what that's an acronym for. But um, <laughs> I've had some, uh, some pretty amazing questions come in. Um, one was, we, we know there's some amazing artifacts on the screen there behind you and, and in front of you. Can you tell us a little bit more? I know Michael showed us the, uh, the Civil War cap there. Can you tell us a little bit more about the helmets and the, the medals that are hanging behind you? Yeah, I mean, I'll start with the medals that are behind us. Uh, what you see are four actual medals of honor that were presented to um, soldiers uh, and Marines from the, the Western Pennsylvania um, area. We own, we own seven medals of honor and we're very proud of that. Our medals start from uh, the Civil War. We have a, a, several Civil War ones. Uh, we have um, an Indian War one. We have um, World War II, several World War II, uh, and a uh, Vietnam medal, and a Korea. So we're very proud of that. That's what you see behind. In front, I uh, have here, this is a, a World War I helmet. It's a Doughboy helmet. And this is painted, this is a camouflage painting, but that's a division patch. And it's a Black Hawk, it's a bird. So this is the Black Hawk division. So these patches, these patches were incorporated into paintings. The one in front of Tim is a World War II helmet. And you see on the side, there is a, a bird, another bird in a red triangle. Uh, that's a Thunderbird. And this was the 45th Infantry. Um, and they, their patch was the Thunderbird. Uh, so you see how these patches um, are used in, in many different ways and insignia are used in different ways. Excellent. Thank you. And uh, huge thanks for having such uh, such great artifacts nearby. Uh, another question that's come up um, a decent amount is, um, is why do people um, donate artifacts like that, uniforms and, uh, and, and you know, remnants of uniforms um, to museums like yours? And how can people do that, uh, you know, if they're not necessarily in the Pittsburgh area? Yeah, I, I think uh, the main reason is uh, we get this a lot. People just want memories to live on. And um, uh, sometimes it's just, just as simple as, you know, a family has nobody else, nowhere else to pass it along to. Um, you know, they, they certainly don't want to throw it away. Um, and they want, you know, uh, they're, they're, it preserved and, and taken care of. And that's what we can promise them. When, when items come to us, they will be taken care of. Um, you know, some will be put on display. Some may, may not be put on display. But if, even if they're not on display, they will be, you know, uh, preserved as best they can be. Um, and the other part to that question, um, what was the other part to it? How can they, how can they get it? Here? How can they get, how they can get it to us? Yeah, um, we're open to, to um, you know, anything. It's just the, the first step is reaching out via email to, to Michael, our curator. Um, you can visit our website, soldiersandsailorshall.org to get all that good contact information. And we usually, especially during these times, just like to start with some photographs. Um, to be quite honest, there was a time when we uh, accepted a lot of artifacts and we, you know, we're kind of newer as a museum and we're, we're taking a lot of things. We're a little bit more selective now. And that's why it's just great to start with some photographs to see, you know, if it's even worth taking to the next step. But even if we get to the step where, yeah, we're interested in the donation is going to take place, we get things shipped here, you know, all the time. And it's one of the funnest parts of the job is when you get that delivery yeah. and you're like, oh, you know, what, what are we yeah. going to have to add to our collection today? So. It is part of the fun of working at a museum. 
Perfect. Thank you. And thanks to everyone who, uh, who asked. And uh, if you do have artifacts, um, you know, I, I can't think of a, a better place to, uh, to have them go. Um, hey, one other question we got was uh, people wanted to see a few more things up close. We had a lot of, oh, I want to, I want to zoom in a little bit. So if you guys don't mind, I may zoom in. I think particularly that was about the, the ribbons and pins. And so uh, I may just zoom in real quick on the, um, you know, the, the slide that we have here yeah. with exactly that um, left lapel on it. And then if you guys, um, you know, don't, uh, don't mind just kind of touring us through really quickly some of the highlights so that uh, that everyone can see it so let me pull that up yeah so what you're seeing here is as we described at the very top there um, that one is so important that's that combat infantry badge that we talked about and and that one stands out to me because a lot of times that is specifically pointed out to us mm -hmm. you know when somebody has that even more so than the, than the medals sometimes um you know that, that that is so important and then right below that what do we have right below that uh, army aviator so that would be somebody who uh, flew a uh, helicopter or something like mm -hmm. that. Yeah, the wings are mm -hmm. kind of the dead giveaway on that. Um, and then we get into these, these ribbons and, and the top row has two ribbons next to each other. You can see the color scheme there. And that's really what you're looking at in these ribbons is the color scheme. Mm -hmm. And that's really gonna break down which medal it's representing. And that top one there um, you know, is the uh, Distinguished Service Cross. Uh, and you can see the little clusters on there representing multiple times that it was awarded. Um, so there's two on the top row, two on the second row, then it gets to three. So it's expanding around the lapel there all the way down, as we said, down to the bottom where it's some, uh, you know, theater of operations, you know, places that that person served um, or uh, some medals that maybe uh, came from other countries. Yeah, I see a Kuwait medal down there and a Vietnam, uh, Republic of Vietnam service medal. Um, so those were issued by uh, foreign governments, uh, but there were also the American versions uh, Above the Vietnam one has, uh, I mentioned before, the three uh, bronze stars and one silver star on it. And uh, next to that is um, uh, Gulf War uh, ribbon, which has like a tan for the Gulf right. colors. So as we did mention, even though this is a composite, it would have been somebody who spanned the Vietnam era all the way through the Gulf War era, which is possible. There are, there sure. are certainly individuals who did that. So you could see that combination on a, on a uniform. And then below, what do we have down there? That's some of those uh, ones that we talked about that they, they have to earn. Go yeah. ahead, Mike. And Pathfinder mm -hmm. um, is the uh, torch with the, with the wings, the uh, parachutist, uh, master parachutist um, with the uh, parachute and the wings and a star wreath above it. Next to that is uh, our wings with a, a helicopter flying straight at us. That's air assault. And below that is... Um, a jump badge. Uh, it's called a halo, and it's for a, a free fall, a free, um, a free fall parachuting. Um, so it's a qualification badge as well. well. Huge thank you for running through that again. I know people were uh, were really excited to uh, to get up up close and personal with uh, you know with all those. So um, so huge thank you. I guess one last question. I know we're uh, maybe be a little bit over time, but uh, you know time flies when you're having fun. Um, People who are, like I said, you guys are uh, our stars on our platform now. Uh, you guys were here on, on Veterans Day. You're back now. Uh, if people want to learn more, but, uh, you know, aren't, aren't in the Pittsburgh area or, um, you know, just can't make it to the museum, it may snow again soon, those kind of things. Where, uh, where can they find more about, uh, you know, some of the great things going on at Soldiers and Sailors and, and maybe with Varsity Tutors? Yeah, so um, our website is the key. You know, you want to visit soldiersandsailorshall.org. Um, you know, we're, we are starting to get much more involved in streaming um, and providing these virtual type programs. And, and I can see that continuing for, for long into the future, um, just like you said, because not everybody can get here. So we want to make this content available. Um, coming up, we have a, an African-American heritage celebration event taking place on um, February 11th. And uh, that'll be Thursday evening, the 11th. And we will be um, talking about African-Americans during the Civil War, especially from the Pittsburgh area. And then our next varsity tutors class, which will be on March 23rd, will actually be somewhat related to that. We'll also re re um, look at uh, African-Americans during the Civil War, but it will be very specific to a very special artifact that we have in our collection, which is a personal sketchbook with personal stories of some of these individual soldiers that we'll look at. So we're really looking forward to diving into those stories with you guys at Varsity Tutors um, coming up in February uh, 23rd, I believe it was February 23rd, Tuesday evening. 
Tim, you might want to mention Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, of course. We also have our Facebook and Instagram pages um, that you can always keep up to date on all the great activity that we have. And the Facebook page, especially, I know Mike creates a lot of content for that, that is delivered with uh, maybe highlighting an object, an artifact, um, maybe for an anniversary or a special date. Um, or just, you know, because we have something cool that we want to share. So yeah, definitely keep a, keep tabs on those things. You can also, when you go to our website, sign up for our email list and get added to that. So you can get information that way as well. Well, thank you guys. We are really excited for, uh, for some classes coming up. I think you even mentioned March 23rd. Also, there'll be another one there, uh, but we've got, to, we've got to, uh, February 23rd and March 23rd. We've yeah. got plenty. Uh, it's, it's, uh, we're excited about all of them. So a huge thanks to, um, to the, uh, to, uh, you know, both Tim and Michael and, and everyone at soldiers and sailors Memorial hall and museum. Um, huge thanks to everyone for all of your participation and, uh, and questions and, uh, and especially, uh, thank you to, to all who have served uh, and families of those who have served, um, you know, a special, um, you know, thank you to all of you. And, and it's been an honor to, uh, to be able to take a closer look at all those things. A, a slight apology. To anyone. I don't think it counts as stolen valor. Let me know guys. If uh, for those who got a, a selfie with just a picture of my name while, uh, while that was up there before we got the other uh, <laughs> no, video. I think you're okay. Fixated. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. So um, as promised on the way out, here's all the information to, uh, to, you know, follow either varsity tutors or soldiers and sailors on, on Instagram, but most importantly to get those, uh, those selfies up and, uh, and tag there for the opportunity to win. Remember, you can win a swag bag from the museum with some great things in it and a full year membership at VT Plus where you can study anything and any everything under the sun. And if you don't win, that's uh, you know, shame there can only be one winner. Come back for future classes or for $19 a month. Um, you can subscribe and, uh, and take classes on all kinds of things, everything from military history to arts and crafts to math to magic um, to, uh, to sharks, dinosaurs, all kinds of exciting things. So with that, we'll, uh, we'll say one, one final thank you to everyone. And uh, we hope to see you back in one of these classes or on, on VT Plus soon. So thanks, everybody.